I, I shoot people. I photograph weddings, portraits and events as my, my primary source of business. Well, I left school when I was 15. I was really, really poorly when I left school um, and so consequently I kind of dropped out and what I had to do is, I couldn't, my dad wasn't prepared to let me sit about the house and do nothing so what I did was kind of went to the computer, looked at some kind of courses um, and when I looked at the courses there was one there in photography and creative crafts so I'd always been a bit arty so I thought, do you know what, it'll be pretty easy going on me, it's not going to be too tough um, on my chest because it was chest infections I had so um, I went for it and it turned out I really, really enjoyed it. I spent four months in Africa with the army. I saw some amazing, amazing sights and had a, a silly wee pocket camera with me and was determined that as, you know, when I come home I was going to get myself a proper camera and learn how to take photographs so that I could do justice to the, the scenes that I'd seen. Um, so when I came back, got some money together, bought myself my first SLR, started reading every magazine and book that I possibly could, spent far too much money on film, processing, prints, and making an awful lot of mistakes and hopefully learning from them. And it just started growing from there. So what I did was is I then pursued it into NQ and then furthermore went into HND. Um, however, um, one month into my HND, my sister sadly passed away. Um, so I dropped out and a month after that, I began to get these really, really bad infections and I was kind of always run down, but I still loved photography. I really embraced it the further that I went up through college. I launched my own business in January 2011, um, shortly after all the kind of the health problems that I'd had. And by February, I'd won a national competition and I was on my way to London Fashion Week. The, the one thing I've realised about wedding photography is there's no such thing as an average wedding or, or, or an average bride. Um, the very first wedding I ever did was the case that everything that could go wrong went wrong. Uh, the groom and the best man fought at the speeches. Uh, it poured with rain so we had to take the photographs inside at the venue. Everything. Um, and the way I looked at it the morning after, after I, the tears dried up, was that Everything that could possibly go wrong went wrong, so every other wedding had to be better. I, and pretty much they have been ever since. Like every other business, you get your quiet times and when you're when you're working for yourself, you're based from home, you you know, it's very hard to sometimes when business is quiet to pick yourself up and say, look, it's a quiet week, it's a quiet month, it's a quiet, you know, few weeks, whatever. And that's a challenge to, to get yourself up there and keep pushing on. Um, you also get the, the low points where you're photographing some of the best mountain bikers of the world hurtling downhill at 45 miles an hour and your camera dies after six frames uh, and it's times like that you've just got to suck it up, move on, use your backup stuff and just never get done about it. You know, make mistakes, learn from them. Simple as that. People underestimate, I don't think it's taught enough in colleges in particular, how much business of a businessman you need to be. People see photography as something being really arty, but the really important thing is to have like a creek it's crucial to have a business understanding. If you don't have a business understanding, you're not going to know how to market yourself to get your clients. You're not going to know, you need to be very aware of the trends in the market and things like that. Um, so with Young Enterprise, I studied business, so I started to market myself. It just turned out that the clients that I started to get through having done London Fashion Week um, became more and more fashion orientated. So that's why I went into the fashion and advertising side of things. First time I was in WH Smith's browsing through a magazine and looked at the photograph in front of me eh, in one of the pages, thinking to myself, that looks really familiar. And then it dawned on me it was one of my photographs that was actually in that magazine. It's the first time I, I actually realised I could be pretty decent at this. I think the highlight was my first international job um, of my career, which was Singapore. I was still 18 when I went, so I was really young and it was just, it was amazing to be taken from the UK. I'd never really been to proper, like, kind of Asia for a long period of time and it was like, it was truly like getting lost in translation. Um, the, the way was just so different, the light was different, everything was just, it was so hectic. It was, it was a proper experience, you really felt right in the middle of it. Know your equipment, know it inside out, know it back to front and upside down. 
you should be able to operate your equipment with your eyes shut so that when you are busy, things are happening fast running about you. You don't think it's an instinct. And it's scary. It's a very, very scary thing to do when, if you make a mistake, it's down to you, not the camera. But that's the difference. When you can control the camera, you can start creating rather than taking a snapshot. I would definitely say if you're not already doing it all, um, then you need to go and get some sort of business experience. You need to be able to, whether it's interning with somebody, apprenticing, um, or even just going and working in a business that maybe doesn't directly relate to photography, just to see how it operates. Um, to survive in this climate, you're definitely going to need to be entrepreneurial and have good marketing skills and um, you know, know how to promote yourself. The, the best piece of advice I've ever been given in I can only carry it on again, is find what you're passionate about shooting. Find something that you really, really enjoy doing. Then figure out how you're going to make money for that. Every day is different. That's what I really love about my job. You know, it's, it's never the same. Um, I can be sitting one day in the editing suite and then the next day I'm up hanging off of half a building. Um, it's jeopardly friendly, of course, but oh no, it's great. It's great fun. It's the best job in the world. You're waking up every morning and it doesn't matter what you're shooting. You make a fraction of a second last a lifetime. That's all.